Hey, Motor Man here. And last week I did a video I said, don't buy the DCT Gold Wing warning. And if you watch the video, you actually watched it, you'd see that it's a fine motorcycle. I said that it's a great handling bike, just not good for low speed handling because of that there's no clutch. So you gotta depend on the throttle, which is very sensitive, and the brake. But I knew I was gonna get all kinds of grief from people. So I bought a Gold Wing DCT and I think it's the greatest bike in the world. And I'm mad that you don't like it. Well, I like it just fine, just not for low speed handling. I can do it with a DCT wing in five minutes. I figured it out. I wasn't able to do 18 foot turns, but I could easily ride through the, my entire course, the Ride Like a Pro course, which is set up at 24 feet. But people were whining and I hear the old, well, I bought this bike to ride on the road. I'm a road rider, that's me. I don't need to go in a parking lot and ride around cones. You never do that on the road, right. But leaning, turning and swerving is even more important out on the street. And you don't want to practice and find how good you are out on the street when a car pulls out in front of you, you do that in a parking lot. So if you didn't understand that video, you can watch this one. I'm going to give you some excerpts from my Ride Like a Pro Experience video and Survive in the Mean Streets, showing you why you practice these particular exercises and these techniques and how they refer to situations that you'll find out on the road. So if you care about being a skilled rider, you need to watch this. And I highly recommend get my Ride Like a Pro Experience video and Survive in the Mean Streets. You can get it on USB for $34. $4.99 or you could buy two DVDs or even the download. Either way, it really you owe it to yourself and if you carry a passenger, you owe it to the passenger to be the highly skilled rider you know you could be. It's just going to take some practice and some technique. Call this the slow cone weave. Watch this quick lean and swerve. You don't want to practice this when the car pulls out in front of you or when somebody violates you right away. You do it under controlled conditions. When riders come to my class every Sunday, the first time they go through this exercise, they'll be knocking over cones like crazy. But after a few minutes of practice, 10 or 12 times, they get it. Out on the street, you got one shot at it. If you screw up, you're going to hit the car, you're going to go down, and you're going to get hurt, possibly even killed. Practice in a parking lot for the real world. As you can see, Techniques work on every motorcycle. That's a DCT Gold Wing automatic transmission. He's using the throttle against a little bit of rear brake. Gold Wing in the back. It's a regular standard shift. In this exercise, the offset cone weave, head and eyes are of the utmost importance. You've got to look where you want to put that front tire. Think of these as quick transitions from complete lean to the left to complete lean to the right. There are many situations where this would come in handy, either swerving out of the way of a large vehicle or if you're on a winding road and you have turns just like this, sometimes even tighter than this. If you don't know where to look and you tend to look at the guardrail or the oncoming car, guess what's going to happen? I bet you can guess by now. You're probably going to either go off the road or hit the vehicle that you're trying to avoid. Never look at that double yellow line, especially on a winding road. I should always be focused 12 seconds ahead of the motorcycle. If you do that, you'll never find yourself saying, it happened so quick I couldn't do anything about it. What that statement really means is, I wasn't looking far enough ahead. If you're focusing 12 seconds ahead of the motorcycle, you can see potential problems unfolding almost in slow motion, and you'll be more than prepared for whatever the situation may be. Sometimes one vehicle is hidden by another. From the rider's point of view, the white car is completely hidden by the large truck. For a better view, the rider should move into the left lane. Exercise is a counter steering or push steering exercise. We need to push on the bars. If I want to go left, I push forward on the left grip. The bike leans left and it goes left. I push forward on the right grip. It leans right and goes right. That's push forward. It's not a push down. It's push forward on the bars. Push forward on the left grip. The bike leans left and goes left. Push forward on the right grip. It leans right and goes right. I've seen even experienced riders have a problem with this simple maneuver. You have a stop sign. You've got a lane. It's 12 feet wide. That's about the average. The rider wants to make a right hand turn. And instead of making actually the turn between the line and the sidewalk, they focus 
on the vehicle they don't want to hit. Remember, the motorcycle goes wherever you look. If I look there, this is where the bike's going to go. Your hands follow your eyes. If instead, as you're about to make this turn, you make sure there's no traffic coming. Snap your head and eyes and look as far to the right as possible. In fact, the further to the right I look, the better. I'll even stare at this grass. That'll make my turn extremely tight. Now remember, you use the friction zone. You can even put a little bit of rear pressure on the brake until the turn is completed. If you let the clutch out, immediately the bike is going to leap forward two or three feet, and then you've got to really make a tight turn, and your instincts are going to tell you if that bike leaps forward a little too far to look at that obstacle. Don't do it. Use that friction zone. We practiced it in the parking lot, and here's where you use it. We practice turning from a stop in the parking lot for real world situations. I shouldn't even have to mention how important being able to make a simple U-turn is. Make sure the group you're riding with, everybody has the same skill level. The intersection exercise has you practicing U-turns and quick transitions all at the same time. Again, we practice this at a parking lot under controlled conditions. If you normally ride with a passenger, you should be able to do all these maneuvers with a passenger on board. Their life depends on your skill or your lack of skill. Don't make it the lack of skill. Get out in the parking lot. Practice for the real world. Of course, you never have to do a figure eight out on the street. But practicing this maneuver forces you to use the three techniques to the extreme. It builds overall strength in your riding abilities. The stronger rider you are, the more skillful you are, the better and the safer you'll be out on the road.